There we go. We are live. Welcome, everyone. I am so happy to be here with you tonight. So happy to be back. Uh, maybe you are new with Artist Palette Durham Region. Maybe you're new to my events. My name is Chris, uh, but I've been off for about six weeks. I had a baby. Um, if you've been following that journey with me, it was a surrogacy journey. I had a baby uh, the very end of July. So I've been taking some time off just to, you know, relax, heal up, and and I'm back. So it's been about six weeks. Uh, the last event we did together would have been the, the summertime tic-tac-toe, making our own tic-tac-toe out of craft materials from the dollar store. Uh, if you're interested in that video, it's on our channel, of course. Welcome to Dawn. Dawn says that this is interesting. Yeah, it is a unique composition, I think. Thank you so much, Lori. Welcome to everyone. Uh, let me know in the comments maybe where you're from in that live chat there. Uh, let me know um, if you've done other events with me or with us at Artist Palette Durham. And we will just see if we can get a few more people like tuned in and uh, we'll get started. Uh, I will go over the supplies that you'll need. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to show you a picture of the baby because <sighs> I think many people might um, have been following along with my surrogacy journey. Here he is. This is the little guy. So he's he's the reason I've been gone for six weeks. There he is, little Zion. And let's get a more updated picture. Here he is at three weeks old. What a little cutie. But I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back into the routine of everything. School's going to be starting soon. Thank you so much, Barbara. All right, let's get started. If people join a little bit late, they can always rewind. During these live feeds, it is possible to rewind the playback in case you missed something, or you can even pause, hit the pause if you want to take a little break or catch up to where we're at. Um, I suppose if you're watching this after the fact, uh, you can even fast forward when I'm just kind of droning on all right, so everyone um, would have got an email with the pre-sketch outline. So here is that printable outline. Um, trace that onto your watercolor paper. I did it a little bit dark today. I did it dark so that the camera can see it uh, at home. If you've done it light, that's perfect. You do want it to be a little lighter so it wasn't isn't gonna show through your watercolor. If yours is dark like mine, I'm gonna lightly erase it just to make it a little lighter. And you saw in the outline that I left sort of this head region kind of vague. I want you to make your own hairstyle or maybe a hat or whatever you wanna do on her head. Um, so I'm gonna do sort of this messy bun these are like kind of wavy ringlets coming down off her hair, but you can have any hairstyle. It could be long, flowing, beachy, wavy hair. You could have the, the hair down. You could have um, maybe some pigtails or a ponytail. I'm thinking maybe like a beach hat or visor, just like, like a brim of the visor. Um, I am going to add other little things like a little bit of a side view of sunglasses, a little eyelash there. You do you, whatever hairstyle you want, mine's going to be more of a messy bun. So lumpy bun shape, as big as you want, as small as you want. Even the hair comes down like that. Um, and then as for these little wisps, these little ringlet, these little waves coming off here. I'm just gonna do that with the paint itself. I don't need to draw 
each little wisp, that would be a waste of our time. I will draw um, where I want the eyelash. And you can have your eyelash as long as you want. Sort of right in there where the nose kind of dips, the bridge of the nose kind of dips. So that's where the eyelash will be. Profile, of course, and the profile of maybe sunglasses, because, yeah, if you look at glasses from the side, there's not really much to it. This a little arm. So it does look a little weird in profile, but I think people will understand what you're going for. Add sunglasses. What else could you add? What else would be visible? Maybe something like that. Could go for some smaller lenses too. It doesn't have to be that um, tall. What else could you add that she might have? Um, maybe like a bit of outline of a, like a shirt, like a shirt collar. If you want it to look as if she's not like naked, maybe a, a watch or a ring somehow visible or maybe longer nails. Um, yeah, there's not a ton you could do to add to a profile of a person. All right, so I'm happy with that outline. If you want to work on your hairstyle a little longer or any accessories a little bit longer, just hit pause and then uh, press play again when you're ready to join me. <clears throat> I did mention I'm gonna lighten my lines. They're quite dark and I want them a little lighter. So it seems silly that I, I just drew this, but I'm immediately erasing it, but I don't want a lot of pencil visible in the final uh, painting, the final image. So I'll definitely still be able to see the lines I've erased, they're not fully gone. I just have a, a normal like vinyl eraser, but um, there's different erasers you can get, like a kneadable, kind of like a gummy rubber eraser. Those are great. It doesn't leave all these little bits, these little bits of eraser that you have to brush off. There we go. So that was the outline. Um, I'm going to put my pad of paper away. This is um, the brand that I like to use a lot. If you're curious, Canson XL watercolor paper. Put that there. So here's the supplies that we'll need next. I have a brand new set of, it's still by Mei Liang, and I still get it off Amazon. It's just a bigger set in a cute new bigger tin on Amazon. Those. There's some metallics in there. I might put some metallics in the water if I feel like it. I just grabbed a couple brushes today. Nothing fancy. You know me. This one's a little bigger. That's a size eight. This one's a little smaller and pointy. It's a size four. Um, but just like have one big brush, one kind of smaller brush to do little details and you should be fine. I have, now this is optional, but kind of necessary the white of the waves. Now we could um, just leave the white of the paper as the white of our waves, but I think that takes too long, too tedious to kind of go around all that white. So I'm gonna add white later on, on top of my watercolor with either this acrylic paint from just the dollar store or Posca paint pens um, or any other brand of acrylic paint pen or there could be an oil-based pen that you have, maybe even white out. You could probably even use white out to dab some waves, something opaque, mm -hmm. um, because white of watercolor is, is see-through. So we don't use that too much. And I have my water for my watercolors and a little bit of paper towel up here. Let's bring that a little closer. Here we go. So. We're going to start with probably the ocean part of the lady. Let's scooch that over there. Let's scooch this here. Um, the ocean part. I'm going to go dark 
dark blue into medium into lighter blue. Everyone's oceans are going to be different. Um, everyone's outlines are a little different too. Your beaches can be different. I want you to put your own spin on my instructions and, and make this composition really your own. Make it unique. I'm going to use my slightly bigger brush. Now I'm going to use maybe two, maybe three different colors of blue, but maybe you only have like literally one color of blue. That's okay. You can still do this. You're going to do a nice, dark, rich shade of that blue, really lots of pigment up here. And then as you work further down, just more water, more diluted, and then you'll get that gradient of dark to light. In my case, I might use um, maybe up here like a Prussian blue. Prussian is nice and dark, like navy blue. In here, maybe maybe like a ultramarine or cobalt blue in here. And I'll just add more water to make it lighter down there. So I like using this little handy dandy little swatch card so I know what color they look like. It's always good to have a swatch card because, you know, these two look very similar when you look at the paint and the palette, but they're very different once you wet them. So let me use a little, hmm. Yeah, I think I do like the Prussian blue. It's a nice dark, rich blue. Here it is. Um, you can always do a little, sometimes I'll do some extra mixing in the lid. Just plonk some paint down right in the lid and add some water to it. Or just use it right from that little pan. That is a nice, rich, dark blue. Look at that, rich. And it's okay to have lighter areas, darker areas. It's the ocean. It's wavy. The, the light is, I don't know, hitting the water, hitting the waves differently. Nice and rich. So everyone's just going to be different. You can have you know, more curly hair, make the hair more, a little bit bumpier, a little bit more texture, curlier. Lots of nice, rich, rich blue here. Just, just glob it on there. So I'm aiming for my water to be like chin area. It's like here. So maybe dark one third, medium another third, light the final third. But if you want the dark to come further down, go as far down as you want, whatever you want to do. It's nice and rich and dark. And we're going to add lots of wispies after too. So here's a lot of nice dark blue. We'll go down to there, beautiful. And then let me pick something sort of medium. Um, let's go with um, next to my sky, maybe this blue. This one's called intense blue. I don't know what that means. Let's see what that looks like. That looks very similar. Let's go with the, uh, let's go with this one next to it. Yeah, you can try out different blues, see what you like and just kind of blend them all together. Yeah, that's slightly different. Let me put some of that here. And my painting that I'm doing right now today is going to look different than this one. Yours at home is going to look different from this. And that's what we want. And I just let those colors touch and mush them together. Lots of water, lots of paint, smudge them all together. Wiggle your brush around. There's going to be lighter parts and darker parts. Let me get some of the glasses here too. I guess you could change the features of her face, make her nose more pointed or more pronounced to match a, someone in your life, make it look more like them. It's 
Sometimes I'll even just get my brush wet. There's just water on my brush. I'll just dab it around, swirl it around. I'll just dab water. Let's see how far do I want to go with that? Maybe, yeah, maybe about to there. So yeah, a third dark, a third sort of medium, and then this third will be sort of lighter, almost, almost to white. That's pretty good for now. And yours can definitely be lighter or darker on the whole. So now my brush is, is clean, mostly clean, just water on it. I'm gonna sort of fill in this um, sort of chin, back of the hair with just water for now. And I'm sort of not letting it touch the, the paint just yet, just water to wherever you want like the sand to start, maybe chin, maybe even lower. If you want to go like down to the neck, that'd be fine too. So there's some wet water here. Now with my brush still wet, I'm gonna let the blue touch it. And you see it starts flowing immediately, it starts going into that wet watery area on its own. And you can kind of, um, Coax it, swirl it around. You decide how far down. Very watery. Yeah, I don't know if you can, let me see if I can hold this at an angle. Bend it back into place. Uh, what angle can I hit the, the glare? Oh, there's the glare. You can see the glare of the light on the water. I've gone down to about here. But everyone's is gonna be different. As this dries, this is gonna get lighter still. So if you think right now yours is like too dark, don't worry, it'll get lighter. And I might even go back in now and add more of those colors that I added earlier just to enrich some of these areas, get them nice and dark and deep. Go back in with the same colors you were using. Just dab some more of it in there. And as it dries, there's gonna be natural spots that are drying differently than others. And we call them blooms or cauliflowers. Um, sometimes you'll get a hard edge. That's fine. That's okay. These are waves. We are okay with lines and ripples and things happening in the waves. I sometimes encourage it. Again, I dip it in water and I just kind of dab around some water. See what kind of cool shapes happen. And my paper, it bends a little bit. Just bend it back into place. You can even pick it up and tilt. Tilt and the water and the paint is gonna move around and do whatever it wants. It could end up looking like, like waves. Can you bend it this way? Bend it this way, bend it the other way. <laughs> It does look a lot like me. When I do like a silhouette, a profile of a woman, it always sort of kind of ends up looking like myself. I do have the messy bun going on right now. I got the glasses on. I would love those long lashes. I'm gonna add some wispy hairs now. So as many as you want, maybe, maybe just a few. I kind of went nuts with all these wispy strays, but you're at the beach, it's windy. They get a little out of control, I think. Is that just me? And the humidity. Oh yeah, the humidity. That really does a number on my hair. I'm gonna do, so the same colors we were using. So I was using a, a nice rich Prussian blue up, up at the top. So get some of those going. Some stray bangs. 
blown in the wind. You can even just kind of dip into here, grab some of that. Just, I'm still using my big brush actually, but I'm just using the tip of it. And some could be dark and some could be light. And we'll get some of that other blue I was using, sky blue. And different brands have different names for their colors. So this is almost kind of like a cerulean blue. And I will do some down here at like the sort of the nape of the neck, just light, wispy. You be the judge of how many. Has she been at the beach all day? Or has she maybe just arrived and she's still a little composed? I'm gonna go to the beach this Monday. So my hair will probably look like this at the end of the day on Monday. And I want some more. Oh, you can you can see my hesitation. Like I want to do more because it's so fun, but I don't want to look too frazzled. I think that's that's a good amount. I will add a few um, like brown ones later. Here I have the beach kind of a little bit further up, but here I'll have the beach maybe to about here. But I'll still add a few brown ones just to tie it in. Lovely. So we're gonna let that dry before we add the white. Um, foam, surf, so we'll let that dry. Let's work on some of our sand color and there's gonna be several layers down in here too. So let's get our first layer of sand. Um, so I'm gonna use in this palette like a, like a yellow ochre sort of a color, like a brownie yellow. If you don't have a yellow ochre, you could mix brown and yellow together with some water. Mix that in your lid or on a palette. Brown, any brown with any yellow, try it out. See if it gives you like a sandy color. You could add um, other colors to your sand. There's so many different sands in the world. You could have a really dark, almost black lava-like sand. You could have very pale, almost white beach sand. Um, pink. There is certain sands that are slightly pinkish. So if you've maybe been to a place that has really um, remarkable sand and you want to kind of remember that, you can tinge your sand any color you want, like actually. Let me do, I'll do the yellow ochre, browny, yellowy. Put some of that over here, but with a lot of water. A lot of water. We want this first layer to be sort of lighter and we'll streak in some darker bits uh, after. Just looking for color here. That's pretty light. That's nice. It looks quite, um, it looks quite yellowish, maybe even a little bit orangish on the camera. In real life, it looks not quite so bright but that's that's just me so quite light fill in that um i guess that would be shoulder region of our lady upper back neck and i'm not gonna let i'm not gonna let the wet blue and the wet sand touch I'm going to leave a little gap. We don't want them uh, blending into each other. It'll make kind of, well, it would make green. That wouldn't be the worst thing. But also kind of having that white gap is like the, the foamy surf. Yeah, pretty light. Again, it's okay if there's um, dark bits, light bits, streakies. It's all okay, we're gonna add streakies on purpose. And I'll do the hand in sand color. 
nice and light, watery. Try not to let my sand and my water touch and bleed into each other. It feels so good to be back, you guys. I have been making art in the last uh, six weeks. And I'll show you some. There's upcoming events. But it's just so good to be back teaching again. And just spending an evening just creating. Yeah, nice light beachy sand color any if yours is lighter darker it's okay yellow if it's just plain yellow that's all you have that's okay too mm -hmm. checking in on my on my hair my ocean there's like a big kind of a valley in the wet paper so i just kind of tilt big puddle forming right here. Now it's kind of flowing. All right. So while this is still like a little wet, even if this is like starting to dry a little bit, um, we can streak in other colors like um, even yellow, even just brown, maybe even some reddish tones just to make the sand look more textured, more maybe diverse because a beach is never just one color. Let's get a little, maybe this brown, a little darker brown. I can mix it in with my ochre, slightly darken it. Yeah, so this is still like a little bit wet. So it's kind of blurring and kind of moving around. It's not staying put. And then some areas are a little bit drier. That's fine too. I'm mostly going to do horizontal streakies, just thin, thick, whatever you want, any color. I can even get some even darker brown. It doesn't have to be like even throughout the whole beach because parts of the beach might be darker than others, little deposits of rocks and things in different areas. I think the more random and non-uniform, the better. Oh, and the hand too. Don't forget the hand. Give it the same treatment, horizontal. Dark brown, even maybe some green. You can get some green in there. We're going to add green seaweed too. If you like, you don't have to add the things I'm adding. Think about different things that would be on a beach. Um, shells. Bigger rocks. Um, a sand dollar, a starfish be on a beach. Ooh, I want to do some yellow. I'm going to get a little touch of yellow. What about a little bit of green? Green with maybe a little brown, greeny brown. Maybe it's like algae, like a little patch of algae. What else? Maybe some black? A little bit of black. Let's see what that's like. Um, yeah, it kind of just turns grayish, but. Mm, 
Don't like those globs. What the heck? There we go. No mistakes here. Anything can be soaked up. Yeah, mine's very random. No two areas are the same. I still have this big dark patch here. Where's my tissues? Sometimes to encourage certain areas to dry, just soak up a little bit of it. Just soak up that little puddle. If you have any big puddles, you can soak them up. If they're going to take a long time to dry. Yeah. Actually, the tissue is actually fun to, like, kind of take away some paint and then it seems kind of wave-like but I'm not going to do too much of that. We're going to add waves. <coughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, what do I got here? Maybe a little more brown. I just keep playing with it. I keep adding little streaks. Little blobbies. And again, it's going to dry lighter than it looks. Or sometimes I just have a wet brush. Again, I just have a wet brush and I can just dab some water in there, kind of blur things, blend things together, soften things with a little wet brush. dark and I do want to have a few um, beachy wispy hairs too so get a little bit of ochre or brown a couple of those especially if your if your beach goes up a little further than mine I'm liking that. That's starting to dry. That's good. Let's let that dry a little bit and start thinking of, I mentioned other things that might be on the beach besides um, seaweed, driftwood, um, conch shell, and we are going to add some, I don't know if you noticed them, little footprints. So I've got maybe dog, it could be a dog, footprints, and human footprints. What if you want to do um, just human footprints, like one set or two sets, human footprints? Um, maybe human and then two dog footprints. You know, change it up. What other footprints could we do? Maybe like bird, like seagull. Wouldn't that be so cute seeing little seagull footprints kind of wandering around instead of the, the ones I have? Or maybe like, like, do you see the turtles here? Maybe that's like mama and papa turtle. And crawling towards the ocean is like a teeny little baby turtle leaving little tracks. Wouldn't that be cute? Or like a little herd of baby turtles making little tracks towards the ocean. That would be so, so cute. What other tracks could be in the sand? Like a crab? What would that little footprint look like? Just a little like, little dee -dee 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 -dee. That could be super cute. So start thinking of things. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I want yours to be um, different. While this is drying, let me share with you some events that are coming up. Uh, in the next weeks with me. Now that I'm back, cute stuff coming up. I'll show you um, some paid ones and some free ones. So uh, I usually teach on Thursdays, every Thursday. So 
And one week from today, we're going to be doing this watercolor plus pen, like a, like a Sharpie pen, like a marker. Uh, I called it uh, Urban Jungle Cat. And it has kind of like an urban street art um, feel to it, I think. A little bit graffiti-esque. You might see that on like a big like mural on a wall or something. It would be cute. So we're going to do this on Zoom. It is a paid event. You get tickets on our website, artistpalettedurham.com. And you get a printable outline, again, for this one. And then we, we do a Zoom. Now, if you're not able to do the Zoom with me, everyone who is a ticket holder does get the full recording to keep forever. So join me next Thursday. Tickets on our website, Urban Jungle Cats. That's a paid one. Uh, after that, so two weeks from today, I'm going to do another free one right here on YouTube Live. Um, this one's mixed media because it's pen plus watercolor plus buttons. I think it's super cute, very colorful, very fun. Um, I called it Lofty Living <laughs> because I didn't want to use a certain word, but I'm sure the word that came to your mind as soon as you saw this is the, the word I'm thinking, <laughs> but we're calling it lofty living is what I called it. We're going to use um, pen to do the house, watercolor in the background, and we're gonna hot glue or super glue buttons. Um, you can find buttons online. Maybe, um, maybe you have a, a jar of buttons in your house you don't know what to do with. You're gonna do this. You're gonna make this lofty living painting with me two weeks from today. I'd love to see what buttons you have at home to add. I just got these on Amazon. So they're all uniform kind of boring buttons. But if I had like heart buttons or metal buttons or flower buttons, I would have added those. Okay, so that is two weeks uh, from today into September already. Wow, September 7th for that one. Then in September uh, the 14th, second Thursday of September, uh, I called it The Harvest. This painting looks like watercolor, but it is in fact coffee, instant coffee. And I will walk you through um, drawing this. We will draw it together. We won't use an outline. We'll draw it together. And then we fill it in with coffee. It's so much fun. It smells great. And it has like a nice shine after it dries. Well, you can't, it's in a plastic sleeve, but the coffee itself when it dries has like a, a shiny glossiness. It's really cool. And I have a number of coffee tutorials available from, from the past on our website. Um, also on YouTube, we did a coffee tipsy teacups. If you wanted to try that video for free first before doing this one with me, just to sort of get a feel for working with coffee as a medium. Join me for that one. It's a paid event, September 14th. Okay, and then let me show you the one after that. I'll show you, I'll just show you, <laughs> I keep, there's so many cute things coming out. Three more, I'll just show you three more and we'll get back to this. <clears throat> so recently I was away in Nova Scotia as sort of like a, a little restful vacation uh, after the birth. And I made this turtle with stippling. So I called it Peggy's Cove Turtle Pen Stippling. So um, all dots. This whole thing is made of tiny, tiny dots, big dots, little dots, really condensed dots to get that nice dark black or very light dots for lighter areas. And I'll walk you through that. You will again get a outline for this one. This one's a paid event. So you get the outline and then we just go dot crazy for two hours making this Peggy's Cove turtle. Tickets on the website September 21st. This one is over here. It's a little bit different. It's 3D. I gotta get it. September 28th is 3D. It's mixed media. It's a little bit different but I like to offer different things just to keep you guys guessing. Look at that. Look at that. It's a flower, a black eyed Susan just popping right off the canvas. 
It is sheet music. Sheet music just on like regular paper. You could um, go to a, a thrift store or bookstore, used bookstore, and get a book that has, you know, piano music and make this with me. And this middle bit is um, cord or rope glued down. Lots of fun. Brings you that September 28th. A 3D Black Eyed Susan mixed media. I think it'll be fun and different. I think it'll be quite the conversation piece if you have that up on your wall at home. And let me show you just one. Yeah, one last one. Um, I don't even think it's on the website yet. Oh, it might have just gotten put on the website. You probably haven't seen it. It just got posted. October. Uh, yeah, already in October. October 5th, here he is, and there's that outline for the turtle. Uh, I called it One Tall Latte, please. It's funny that like the tall at a coffee shop is kind of like the sh one of the shortest ones, you know what I mean? So really this giraffe, he would probably want like a Trente and so tall so big uh this one's watercolor and then a little bit of that white posca pen to get those white highlights join me october 5th for that one tickets on the website and that's all i'll show you that's all i have prepared and then this is starting to get drier that's good very good I think we can move on. If your ocean is still a little wet, hit pause, wait a few minutes and join, join in again. Um, if it's like still super wet, get a tissue kind of dab at the, the really puddly bits to help it dry. I think we're good. We're gonna add our little um, turtle silhouettes if you can see them. This one's darker than this one. So I think that one's easier to see. It could be um, just one, you can have one, you can have several turtle outlines. Um, I'll use my smaller, yeah, I'll use a smaller brush. And you could do these silhouettes black if you wanted to. I did very, very dark, dark, dark blue. And this one kind of like a medium-y blue, but it could be black. It could be um, green, green sea turtles, like a nice rich dark green. I'm going to use nice dark, Could probably go back to my Prussian blue here, sea turtles. Sea turtle shells are not round round, they're more um, pointed at the back kind of thing, but I don't even have, I don't even have the whole turtle shell, I just have part of it, and part of it's going to get covered with uh, a wave. So maybe start with th three quarters of a turtle shell, anywhere you want. They could be like really deep up here or more in the shallows. Mine's kind of middle. And then, yeah, part of this shell will be part of a wave covered up by a wave. So it doesn't have to be a whole shell. And give them a little head. The neck, you know, kind of a pointier head, a little longer neck. If you're not comfortable like doing it directly with paint, do a pencil outline, do a nice light pencil outline. Oh, my family's home. Light pencil outline and then do it with the paint. That is perfectly fine. And then I'm going to add flippers on, on either side. And they have the, the longer flippers with that sort of big paddle. Because they're paddling through the, the big ocean versus like a little pond turtle. They just have like little cute little flippers. I don't know. Paws? Not a paw. Feet. Go with feet. And yeah, up to whether you want part of part of the flippers to be covered with a wave or not, or fully visible. 
I'm going to say part of that flipper is covered with a wave. I'll have a wave coming across here and it kind of will cross over this body. So that's all I really need to do for that turtle. You sort of cut off a little bit. If you wanted to do like the whole turtle, you could do the whole turtle visible from above. You could absolutely do that. So there's one turtle and I'm gonna do a bit lighter blue, maybe this blue, sky blue for another turtle. Maybe it's the same size. Maybe they're swimming side by side. I made this one like a little bit smaller but that's just me. That's just a choice I made. And again, whatever amount of the turtle you want showing beneath the waves. I don't think my family could make any more noise. I guess if you started making coffee. <laughs> yes, drums, yes. That would be more noise. Yeah, so I've got like two sort of halves, halves of turtles. Let me bring that up a little closer. Or, or any other creature. What if you do a eel, an eel swimming along in the surf, a dolphin as seen from above. Um, shark eh, wouldn't really work because, because you don't see that telltale fin from above you would just see like the shape of them and people might think oh dolphin and you're like no it's a shark what else would have a noticeable shape from above I guess you could do like hmm, seal I think a seal would be quite distinct in a silhouette from above so I've chosen turtles yeah so let those dry. Good. Let's see, my beach. Yeah, the beach is getting pretty dry. Yeah, it's dry enough that I'm comfortable doing a little seaweed. Again, if your beach is not dry enough, get a little tissue, dab it a little bit, maybe fan it, or just hit pause, wait a few minutes. You don't have to rush it. Um, so I've got like seaweed in kind of like strips. Let's bring that a little closer. As if maybe the waves push the seaweed to this level at high tide. And then it pushed some more seaweed to about here as it was going lower tide, going out. So there's kind of little strips of seaweed as if the waves pushed it. But if you want like less, more, uh, none, could be none. And seaweed is different colors. You can have some nice, rich, dark red, purples, dark greens. Let's do, I'll start with maybe like a lighter green. And I can always dab in some darker or lighter. How far did my seaweed get at high tide? Maybe up to here. If you know for a fact that you want to have like lots of different footprints, maybe leave a little more room for yourself. Like if you need like two sets of humans and two sets of dog footprints, if that's what you have in mind, leave more room for yourself. Dab, dab, dab. Just kind of dab and squiggle. It's seaweed. It doesn't have to be perfect, little bunches, lighter, darker. Mm. 
Yeah, my, my hand is just kind of doing like a little bit of a jackhammer kind of a thing. Yeah, I can mix some brown in there, brownish, greenish, yellowish, greenish, purplish, reddish, black. I'm sure there's black seaweed. Okay, there's some green. What do I want next? Um, ba -ba -ba. this is a nice purple. If I get a little purple with a little green, it's going to make a lovely reddish. And they could absolutely be touching each other, intertwined, blending. Little dots, individual dots could be like little leaves. And I hold my paintbrush kind of up and down as I do little dots. It's kind of burgundy. What about, I think maybe some yellowy, yellowy, browny, greeny, I don't know, whatever colors dab it like next to or on top of. I guess there could even be some like in the water. I didn't put any in the water here. What an oversight. I'm putting some in the water now. I'm doing it. being washed ashore as we speak. Hmm. Not sure if I'm 100% loving that, but I tried it. And you guys can decide if you want to try it or not. Yeah. Something different. What about... Dark, dark green. Yeah, a little dark green here. Where's my little sheet? <clears throat> what is a nice dark green? This one? Hooker's green. Yeah, it's nice to kind of layer dark and light together. Give it a little bit more uh, depth. even if it's just in little patches. Maybe I've gone too much, but I kind of like a nice seaweedy beach. All right. That's a nice little blend of colors there. We're gonna add, um, we're gonna add some white, um, kind of like foamy bubbles in there a little later. How are these guys doing? These are drying nicely. Good. We could, yeah, we could start on some footprints because that's nice and dry here. Again, these footprints, different footprints, zero footprints, I think, like a seagull would be hilarious. But I'm going to do dog and human. I think what would be easiest if you literally turn, turn your page, because I think it's easier to draw footprints when they're up upwards, not horizontal, vertical. But that's just me. So I'm going to turn it like this way to look at. Turn your and you're painting, whatever. I guess you could have the footprints going that way if you wanted them that way. You know, like this, and then the footprints are like that. Um, I think I'll go. Can I do this without smudging them? Let's put this. Is this dry? Not really. Let's put this. If I put that there, that'd be okay. 
Now, again, if you wanted to pre-trace, sketch out your footprints with your pencil and then do it with your paint, do that if that makes you more comfortable. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to do it, do it with the paintbrush. And start with like a light brown, and we can darken it later. So I'm going to go with, probably go with more of this yellow ochre. But I can always darken it. A uh, little, little bit of darker brown in there. Dog footprints. We'll start with the dog footprints. Um, sort of like a gumdrop shape or maybe like a Hershey's Kiss kind of shape. Yeah, it's hard to describe. Like a little rounded um, triangle with four little toes. I don't know why I started like right in the middle. I started like right in the middle, not like on the edge or anything. A little crazy. Um, where is it? Here it is. Little tiny doggy footprint. But we're not going to leave it like that. This is just to get it started. We can darken it. But I just want to get sort of like where I want the footprints. And it doesn't have to be all perfectly aligned or all perfectly the same because as maybe the dog's running he's like kicking up sand or taking a big step or a small step so I'm not too worried about spacing it perfectly or little toes And I'll, I'll hold this up to the camera again in a moment because they're little. You can't really see it at this distance so much. Oh, yeah, they're definitely different sizes. Because I'm really just going for the just the overall effect, not not perfection here. So here's some cute little doggy footprints. Kind of walking straight, but if if your dog kind of wanders, meanders, maybe you could have the footprints on a on a bit of a curve. And I will continue it onto the wrist. Her wrist would have a few little doggy footprints too. Here they go, a little bit here, and then they continue over here. But we're going to um, darken them, give them a bit of a highlight with some white later too. Let's do some human footprints. And really, mine are not realistic at all. Mine are more cartoony, these human footprints. Um, you could look up on Google what a human footprint looks like, because it seems in my footprint that the entire foot is making an impression, but really in the sand, just the ball of your foot and your heel, and there's kind of a gap. But I, I did what I did. That is a lot of paint. These ones, you have to sort of alternate left and right. A dog, not so much. Okay, I'll try to make this a little bit more realistic. Big toe, big toe, little toes. Okay, let's see how I did. Here it is up here. That's as close as I'm getting to realistic. Then you gotta do the left, the right, the left, the right. Keep going. Big toe, little toes. 
We're going to, again, darken these, add a highlight. See how I'm doing. I got three right here. They're not perfect. Yeah, some of my little toes are kind of blend it together. That's all right. Hmm. Yeah, not so bad. I'll do like a little, little bit here and then I'll do a little bit on the wrist. if it was continuing over here. Yeah. Right here, a little bit on the wrist. And I've only got like five or six footprints. You could have more. Maybe if they're walking slowly. Closer together. Yeah, that's just to get us started. We'll, we'll darken this so you can see them a lot better. are drying. Seaweed is drying. Good. <laughs> Everything I own is covering cat hair. Okay, let us darken our uh, doggy footprints. So I'm picturing um, the sun, the light source in this case. Maybe the sun is coming um, from the direction of the ocean kind of thing. So if these were footprints in the sand, indents into the sand, depressions into the sand, there'd be a shady side of the footprint and a brighter highlighted side of the footprint. So if we have it oriented this way, instead of sideways, the sun would be coming and hitting along the bottom of the footprint and the top of each footprint would be the shaded side because of the, the dip. The footprint is, is a depression in the sand, if you get my meaning. So I'm gonna get a darker brown, darker brown. Um, what's darker, this one? Doesn't have to be crazy dark. Darker brown, just a little bit a little bit of darker brown along the top of each footprint. <laughs> there's, there's no better way to say it. I need the darker, what am I doing? Whoops, too much paint, what am I doing? Gopped it on there. Let's get a little bit sucked up here. I will, I'll do a few of these and then I'll hold this up. Okay. 
It's tough to see. Okay, just so tiny. It's tiny little footprints. And you can see some of them are really globby. Some of them are a little better, but like the top part of the footprint, I just did a little bit darker. Little, little brush stroke darker. Maybe even a couple toes, maybe the couple toes that are more towards the top, not the bottom, the top. Maybe those are a little darker. I'm not really going for like super duper realism here, but just to get sort of the impression that it's depressed into the sand. And I'll get that a little bit darker brown on the top of each human footprint. So for left and right feet, that would be different spots. So I was doing this foot along here. The left foot. Versus the right foot, again, it's along the top. So it's a little bit different, it's a little curvier. Maybe a little darker on the big toe. So it's the, the top of each footprint. It's hard to describe. The part that's more towards the ocean. starting to dry because it's such a tiny little bit of paint. It's already starting to dry. That's good. I'm going to take my brush, but it doesn't have any paint on it. It only has a, like a little bit of water. I can dip it, I can tap it, maybe even dab it. But I want to sort of blur that um, dark color, blur it into the rest of the foot with a slightly damp brush. So I'm sort of filling in the whole paw print with just like a slightly damp brush. It's like a little bit wet. And I'm just kind of rubbing it, rubbing it on each little paw print. Slightly wet. Just blurring it, filling it in. But the, the dark part is still dark. It's just softer. It's, it's, it's tough to, to really get like a really good illusion with such a tiny little thing. So again, my brush is just slightly damp and I'm rubbing the existing paint to fill in the footprint. But the dark part is still dark. dry.
And it's okay if it doesn't quite have the, the illusion. You can get a little bit more dark and kind of gently kind of darken. But people will understand what you're going for here. You're going for footprints on a beach. And we're going to get some white, too, on that in a moment. Yeah, the white, the white will help, too. Let me add. So before we get into the white of the waves, white foamies, white on the paw prints, let's get a little bit more texture in, like, the sand itself. So I've added, what do I add here? Little dotties, little darker streaks in the sand itself just to give it some more texture. And we can also do white dots later. Browns or greens or you know, like black, gray. Little, little dotty clusters anywhere just to give your sand a little bit more graininess. Tiny little dots, little, little patches. Brown, even yellow, green. Mm -hmm. It's green. It's brown. Um, but we'll add white later. about gray. And also streaks. If some of your streaks kind of um, disappeared as it was drying, you can put some more back in. And color. Yellow, green. Or even like streaks near um, the footprints. Because as you walk, sometimes you kind of drag your toe a little as you're making the step or drag your heel a little or maybe the dog's claws kind of drag a little as he takes the step little drag marks by the feet would be good yeah i think my my beach has lots of texture and interest maybe some more brown maybe a little more brown Um, I do want to have, well, we'll do the, I'll do the white. Yeah, we'll do the white in the waves because I do want to have sort of a dark edge near the white as if the wave has a shadow on the beach because like the foaminess of the wave has like a thickness. So it would have a little shadow, but I'll wait till I do the white. Let's do white. I keep talking about white, white, white. Let's do it. I'm just going to use this dollar store acrylic paint. I'll put a little, like a, let's put a little in the lid. There, that's a perfect little, little amount of white. And your waves could be like mine, really foamy, wavy, or they could be more softer. Maybe it's a calmer day. Maybe it's just ripples. Get some white on a brush. Um, and waves could be any, any shapes, any length, any number. They could be all very straight. And I just kind of blob it on. Keep it very random. 
there. This, this is the wave that's like sort of half covering my big turtle. And it goes like that. And then I've got another wave covering this turtle a little bit. Anywhere. Look at all these great cauliflower shapes, all these different textures as it dried. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Where do I want to go? As many as you want, whatever. Whatever arrangement. Really blob on the paint. And that'll even give it like a little bit of a little height, a little texture, as if it was foamy waves. And the waves could go like right, um, you know, off the page, off the silhouette, right to the edge and beyond. I'll even go back and I do a second layer, just really make it really white. Sometimes the white acrylic starts to kind of pull up the blue. And that's fine. You could have blue in your frothy white part of the wave. But if you want it really white, just blob on even more white on top. And then, of course, I'm going to put white along the very edge of the surf where the sand ends. Blob on some white. Even, even though that section is white, we left a bit of white space. I still want some white paint in there. I have like, I would say I have less waves in this one than the other one, and that's fine. Don't want another one, maybe right here, little one. You be the judge. You you decide. This is your beach in your world. I think that's enough. And then um, streaks coming like back. So wherever your wave is and up, your wave and up, as if it's like um, like foam streakies running back. Um, so I will, I'll do a few with this brush, just with the very tip, but I'll probably uh, use a bit of my paint pen just to see what that's like. Just very light, wispy, even streakies. A little bit of paint on your brush. You could even just kind of um, dip into the paint that's on the page and kind of streak it back. But I'm going to try uh, one of these paint pens <clears throat> to add some streakies. You kind of have to activate it, you know. Let's see what that's like. I like my other one. I like this one best. Yeah. And you can get some pretty thin lines with a, a brush. But I just like sometimes using my little paint pen. And these lines could be broken lines, wispy lines. 
dots. I have some little dots in there too. But all kind of up, upwards from the um, the wave, the foamy wave. I've even got some going across the turtles, across the turtles because they're under, they're under the waves, right across that turtle. Not so much that it obscures the turtle's shape, and you're like, what is that shape? Because there's too much waviness on it. That, that would be too much. Um, on top of seaweed, for sure, right on top of the seaweed. I guess even on the glasses, if you could swing it on the glasses, waves or bubbles or Dots, bubbles, foam, uh, just mist in general. my dots and lines are just like streaming away from the wave because the wave is advancing all the foam and bubbles would be trailing behind else could you add? You could add maybe maybe someone swimming, like an overhead swimmer, scuba diver. That could be interesting. Or like a seagull floating on the water from above. That'd be interesting though, because his little, little head you might not be able to tell it's a seagull. Yeah, other animals would be cute. I'm going to add a little bit of foamy um, foam on the shore, bubbly white. Maybe the waves left some sea foam behind or what have you. So just some white in amongst the seaweed and little little bands, little tendrils, that's little dots.
It's okay if it goes right on top of the seaweed too. That's fine, maybe a little bit over here. Just a little bit, a little bit of white in amongst the seaweed there. I did mention that we were going to add a little highlight to the um, the footprints, the little footprints. So I'll do a few with this paintbrush, but then I'll also try out my paint pen. So if the sun was shining from the direction of the ocean, it would be hitting the side of the footprint that's down below. So not where we put the dark part, the opposite. So get a real small brush, just use the very tip of it. And I'll do a few and then I'll kind of hold it up so you can see it better. Just a tiniest little bit. Maybe even a couple of toes, but it's mostly the, the pad of the foot. Okay, <clears throat> it is so subtle. So these ones, these ones have a little highlight along the bottom of the footprint and these ones don't yet I haven't gotten to those but it's so subtle just the tiniest little bit of white and yeah it doesn't have to be perfect mine are all you know, some are thick, some are thin. So those doggy footprints have a little highlight. I'm going to do the, the human footprints as well. But I'm going to try it with the, with the paint pen. Welcome to Asia joining us. Going live. Yeah, I think... Uh, our live feeds do help the channel. That's a good question. Yeah, I enjoy um, lives with uh, lots of questions. Keep the questions coming in. A little highlight just to help the illusion. Okay. <clears throat> I could I could darken. I might go in and re-darken some of my dark sides. Like these ones are really dark. Yeah, those ones are really dark compared to my newer ones. Okay, a little bit darker. I suppose you could darken it with like a pen or even like a colored pencil. darker. It helps. Oh yeah. I made the darks darker. And then I will add that shadow of the wave. 
So right along the white, so this white edge here, just darken just below it as if it's like a shadow. Okay, let's put that there. I'm just going just below it if it's a little wet and if it touches a little bit, it's not the end of the world. I think it just gives it a little bit more depth. I like to like blur it a little bit, just smudge it, smudge it a little with a slightly damp brush. Yeah, I think it gives the illusion of depth. What else? Maybe some white um, in the sand, little white dots in the sand for texture or even white streaks, white dotty sand. What else could you add? You could add maybe like um, maybe someone forgot their pail and shovel on the beach. Put that in there. What about, um, I mentioned driftwood kind of a thing. Shells. I hate to say it, maybe garbage, you know. Someone's garbage is mixed into the seaweed and the floatsum on the shore. It is hard to see the shape of the chin. You're right, because I did make the chin in this one quite light blue versus the other one, it was the beach. You're right. That is a little lighter in that area. Maybe a little blue, get a little blue going. Get that a little darker, blur it a little bit be able to see it better. Quite right. That's a little better. It's less washed out, but yeah, this one with the beachy chin. See a lot better. Good suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'll call that done. And I'm going to sign it. What color to sign it and where? You could sign like your whole autograph here. I like to hide my initials like in the corner here. So maybe I'll do it in brown and just kind of hide it in the sand or green. Or, oh, you could like write your initials in the sand with like a heart, someone else's initials. That's true. Or sometimes people will put, um, you know, like Mexico 2023 in the sand when they're on vacation. I think that's a cute idea too. I just put the, the initials in the corner there. You could put maybe the year. Uh, what about like the full date, your full name, full date, the title. You could put beachy waves down here in like a cute font. What else could you add? Maybe like silhouettes of, of birds flying up above here. Um, you know what I love to do? And I didn't do it on this one. I really restrain myself. I like to add splashes, watercolor splashes. I think I'll do a little of it because it's fun. So we'll leave this one as the original clean example. Let's put that to the side. Move away anything that you don't want splatted. And I'm going to just drip and drop and splat some of the colors that I like. So 
So in the in the background, right on the water itself, right on the beach, colors that go with the composition, not just random colors all of a sudden. I wouldn't start dripping in like pink. That, that'd be a little weird. There's some blue. Let me get some dark blue. So some of them are landing on the ocean. Some of them are landing on the background. And you could like tap your finger too. Tap for like a little misty. And it's not for everyone. Sometimes it just looks good, nice and clean. Do a green. Green is nice. Tap, tap, tap. Splat. It's just fun. Maybe a little beachy color. Have I gone too, too overboard? Maybe. That's fine. I like it. I'm having fun. There we go. <clears throat> oh, I even got some up there. Yeah, let's do some up there. Tie that all together. Okay, just got to stop myself at some point. So there you go. That is our beachy waves. And we, we made good time, guys. An hour, let's call it an hour and a half. I was kind of babbling on at the beginning a little bit. There we go, two versions. Uh, yeah, similar but different. I would love to see your versions of this. Maybe you did it in watercolor with me. Maybe you tried a different medium today. I would love to see it. Plus all the maybe different things you added. I'd love to see those. Um, we have a watercolor lovers Facebook group. I think I put the link to that in the, in the description below. In the description below should be a watercolor lovers Facebook group link or you can email us a photo of your painting. I'd love to see it. Um, also in the description below, um, there is a tip link. I wanna say thank you to those who did already send a tip when you got your uh, ticket. There's always two options when you get a ticket to a free event. Uh, the tips help with you know putting on more and more of these free events for you and we really appreciate uh, those coming from you before or after. Maybe you thought, maybe I'll, I'll see if I like the event and then I'll send Chris a little something. So there's a tip link in the description below there. Another way to support me and to support all the other hosts with Artist Palette Durham Region is to get some tickets to our paid events, right? So maybe you don't want to send me a tip directly, but maybe one of the other events I mentioned earlier uh, was intriguing to you and you'd like to get a ticket to one of our paid events and that helps support us as well and we will keep on putting on more free events for you uh, till the end of time <laughs> yeah lots of cute stuff coming up next Thursday though I I just love this one next Thursday on zoom tickets on the website urban jungle cat it's gonna be so much fun Similar to this, but we're just adding like Sharpie. So we're going to be using an outline. We're going to be using watercolors. We're going to just blob them on there. We're going to have fun with a Sharpie to get those lovely dark blacks. And I did even use a little bit of my paint pen. That paint pen came into play in the whiskers. It's going to be so much fun. I would love to see you for that event on Zoom. Any questions for me before I sign out? Uh, this video will be on our channel forever. It'll be there forever. You can do this tomorrow, later this week, the weekends. Um, do it next summer. Maybe you're watching from the future. What is 2024 like? You future people. Um, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you subscribe, you get notifications of when we do all of our live free events, not just for myself, but from the other hosts 
as well. You're welcome to Sharon. Thank you so much for joining me. Sharon's thinking dolphins. I love the idea of dolphins more so than sharks. Any questions for me at all? It was a, a good, good event to come back to. Get back into the swing of things. All right, I don't see any other questions, uh, but you can always direct message us or email us any future questions you have. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a good night. Take care. Happy painting.